Hello, I'm Megan Schiller from KDKA TV News, and this is your KDKA News Now update. UPMC announced layoffs today across its 40 hospital system, half of which are in our area. As Shelley Bortz reports, the health giant cites ongoing post pandemic struggles, but insists the job cuts will not affect patient care. The overall cuts represent about 1% of its 100,000 employees. While 1% doesn't seem like a lot, it affects 1,000 employees. Oh, that's pretty bad and sad. Nearly 1,000 employees of UPMC's workforce got the news today they were out of a job. UPMC blames continued post-pandemic challenges that has affected the healthcare industry nationwide. The news, though, isn't sitting well with many people we talked with. It's horrible. It's, I feel bad for the people with families and, you know, trying to pay their bills. It's hard for everyone right now, so I can't imagine, you know, not being out of job. UPMC says the cuts are primarily taking place among non-clinical and administrative staff through attrition, closing of open positions, and elimination of redundancies. The job's a job. People need work. In a statement, Paul Wood, vice president and chief communications officer, says in part, this realignment will not alter UPMC's investments in our communities, facilities, commitment to clinical care. Because these decisions will be difficult for affected employees, enhanced severance pay and benefits coverage is being provided. The healthcare giant reported a $198 million operating loss in 2023, which is down from an operating income of 163 million the previous year. No word though how much these current reductions will save Allegheny County's largest employer. Our government has no problem sending 98 billion in foreign aid. Um, they already gave a billion to Ukraine, but here we are as American citizens struggling. UPMC's total operating revenue for 2023 was $27.7 billion. Reporting in Oakland, Shelley Bortz, KDKA TV News. The state attorney general is taking action against Shell over a pipeline that's creating concerns for environmental groups. Chris Hoffman explains. The charges allege that some of the waters impacted included Raccoon Creek and Beaver County. And environmentalists are concerned because that creek comes right into this water area of the Beaver County Conservation District. The pipeline starts in Washington County, runs through Allegheny, and ends at the Shell Cracker Plant in Potter Township, Beaver County. The Attorney General has charged Shell with 13 misdemeanors. I've always looked at it as if you're driving down the road and you get a couple flat tires, you stop the car and you fix it before you get back on the road. According to court papers, drilling mud, which contains pollutants and industrial waste, got into waters like Raccoon Creek in Beaver County and Potato Garden Run in Fidley Township, Allegheny County. The AG alleges there were several occasions where spills were not reported or underreported by hundreds to thousands of gallons. Former drilling coordinators claimed they were told to not let the DEP slow down their work. Groups like the Beaver County Marcellus Awareness Community say this is just the latest of problems or hazards they've seen with this pipeline. We have a right to clean air fresh water and the preservation of the land, not just for ourselves, future generations. In a statement, Shell says it's reviewing the charges, quote, from the beginning of the construction of the Falcon Pipeline Project, SPLC has cooperated with all relevant local, state, and federal agencies and the affected communities to ensure its pipeline was constructed in a safe and environmentally responsible manner. Shell adds it will continue to work with all necessary agencies. Environmentalists aren't buying it. They're not doing it. As all of this moves through the court system, we'll keep you updated on the proceedings. At Independent Township, Beaver County, Chris Hoffman, KDKA TV News. And now here's First Alert meteorologist Ray Petlin with a look at what's still ahead. Uh, getting down to the range where we could see some uh, frost and freeze uh, conditions starting to take over, meaning plants that don't like the cold could be killed, if not damaged uh, overnight. Now, there is still some cloud cover, and this is helpful. The clouds absorb the heat as it radiates from the surface and radiates it back down. So you want the clouds on a night like tonight, but just keep in mind as the night continues, we're going to see some uh, areas of uh, uh, frost trying to occur, especially north of Pittsburgh. That's where we have the best shot of that occurring. Now, 
When it comes to the clouds, those are pretty stubborn for the moment, but overnight they will break up a little bit more. Temperatures, they're eventually going to be dipping down into the mid 30s, I think, uh, in Pittsburgh for early, uh, early tomorrow morning. But during the afternoon, uh, our temperatures are going to take off quite nicely thanks to the sunshine that's going to be coming into play. Now, Futurecast here shows that uh, we do have uh, the, the setup for these clouds to stick around in Pittsburgh for a good chunk of the night. We have those clouds uh, trying to hang on here, but up north where the uh, frost advisories and the freeze warnings are in place. That's where those skies try to clear out a little bit more than the city. It's going to be a process and take some time, but I think by the time we get into tomorrow, abundant sunshine should be taking over and our temperatures should warm up quite quickly as we go through the day. Now, when it uh, comes to Friday, a lot of sunshine still in play here, and that is going to stick with us uh, into to, uh, Friday evening before the next round of clouds and the next round of showers try to make a comeback. So we have those clouds right now. Temperatures overnight getting into the mid-30s. We bounce back to the lower 60s for high temperatures tomorrow, and then into the weekend we could add to our rain totals, something we don't need, but uh, right now we're officially second place on the wettest Aprils on record. There is an unofficial record from 1852 where we had over nine inches, but uh, with a little more rain this weekend, we could move up that list. 36 tonight, clearing and cold, areas of frost, a little breezy right now, but those winds should dial back a little bit into the coming hours. 62 tomorrow, uh, early freezing and frost, but uh, overall, uh, after we get through the morning hours, those temperatures sort of take off quite quickly, especially with the sunnier skies that we're going to have around. Over the next seven days, we go from temperatures in the lower 60s tomorrow to the 70s Friday and Saturday. And if that's not enough for you, how about some 80s Sunday and Monday? You will notice, though, that getting into the weekend and these warmer temperatures, it does become a little more unsettled. So we'll see some shower and thunderstorm chances uh, trying to return. And those will carry over into Tuesday as those temperatures step down a little bit with sunshine returning by Wednesday.